नमस्कार टॉप्सी एंड टिम वेंट फॉर अ स्विम टॉप्सी स्वैम वेल एंड ब्रोक द स्पेल टिम स्वैम बैडली एंड वेंट होम सैडली ना यू मस्ट बी वंडरिंग व्हाट अ 50 प्लस ईयर ओल्ड मैन इज सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ द कैमरा एंड रिसाइटिंग फ्यूराइल पोएट्री वेल दर इज अ रीजन फॉर दिस दिस वॉज अ पोएम आई रूट वेन आई वॉज अराउंड सेवन ईयर्स ओल्ड and i was mighty proud of it i thought it was a great poem and i went to my dad who's a who's a professor and showed this to him in my heart of hearts i was feeling kind of apprehensive too because well, you might uh, see the poem and tell me what is this you are writing poetry if you should read maths or science your brain will develop you would say something like this or you would say okay it's a good attempt but you can do better but it didn't say any of these things he just picked me up gave me a hug and said one word wonderful if today i am a writer it is because of that one word and that one gesture so gradually as i joined college i little i indulged in a bit of satire some short stories till my daughter was around 4 at that point of time my son happened and my wife gave me a lot of encouragement she said you are such a useless fellow you can't cook you can't even boil an egg you can't sing lullabies you can't wash clothes you can't even wash bums you you say you are a great writer no so why don't you tell st- little stories to ankita our daughter while i take care of aniket for madhavi moving from the realm of the satire to the planet of children's fiction was like moving from the world of boiling an egg to the universe of poaching it anyways i decided to tell my daughter ankita some stories now me being me being such an egoist that i am i decided that why panchatantra why katha charitra sagar or jataka tales i'll tell her my own stories so i started conjuring up little tales for her i do not know whether she liked my antics my jumping around or the content of the stories but in any case she loved each and every story and the ones which she really liked found their way to the word processor and to the editor of some children's magazines and finally on the way to print now 3 4 years later as my son aniket grew up the size of my audience doubled but there was a huge difference as far as the taste and choice was concerned my daughter ankita liked stories uh, of this type you know once upon a time long long ago there was a beautiful princess she fell in love with a tall dark handsome prince and as they were about to be married they strode in a huge rakshasa so the young and handsome prince did some sleight of hand produced a, a huge sword and cut the rakshasa's neck off and the prince and the princess got married and lived happily ever after my son aniket's temperament was exactly or taste was exactly the opposite he i had told him that bruce lee is his guru so every morning he would get up from the bed look at a huge poster of bruce lee which i had pasted and he would say, do his namaskar and say namaste bruce lee ji and his his idols or his icons were batman superman spider man definitely not padman because padman that hadn't happened then and for him the ideal story was in the second or third sentence the first hero would be latching on to the lips of the first villain and tearing them apart a few more sentences into the story the second uh, hero would be latching on to the second villain and you know bludgeoning him to near death so for me balancing once upon a time and Sp- uh, spider man superman batman was one hell of a task but somehow i think i managed that's why i'm a children's writer today and as far as critiquing is concerned i don't think anybody can you know better my son aniket's or 
uh, art and science of critiquing, especially in terms of brevity. He had only two words to, you know, actually critique my writing, either must or chart. Must meant fantastic, chart meant chat gay, means horrible. Since the must quotient was more and the chart quotient was less, I started getting published more and more. I have been writing in many genres, but I think the maximum amount of success, if I may use the word, I've got in children's literature. 2001, I got uh, 14 awards instituted by Children's Book Trust. Uh, this competition is for writers of children's literature. And in one straight go, I got 14 awards and that created quite a stir. When I had gone to a conference in Delhi after that, people were saying, oh, you are the steel man who writes for children. And uh, apart from that, a couple of my books were hugely successful. For instance, Paplu the Giant. It was chosen by its publisher Pratham to uh, as the story to be used for the International Literacy Day on September 7, 2013. The story was performed across the country and abroad uh, in 1000 storytelling sessions. Uh, besides, uh, it was also translated and performed in 25 languages. This book continues to do well. In fact, just last week, I came to know that its uh, Story Weaver edition has been translated into Czech. A few years ago, a story of mine called the Spirit of Diwali appeared in this book uh, brought out in Norway for class 9 students. There were only two Indian writers featured and this sounds extremely, extremely immodest. One was Rabindranath Tagore and the other was Ramendra Kumar. So you know how thrilled I must have been and I continue to be thrilled about that. A few years later, one of my stories called The Wise Kanhu was translated and adapted into Japanese as a Kamishibai story. Now this is Kamishibai. How they do it is they keep a monitor which looks something like a television monitor or a desktop and they slide the picture like this. As the audience enjoys the picture, the narrator starts reading the text which is behind on this, behind this card. This particular story of mine as a part of Kamishibai has traveled across the world and been translated into other languages including Spanish and Basque and others. I've been writing in different genres and uh, possibly for me the most challenging and fulfilling or one of the most challenging and fulfilling assignments has been given by uh, an organization called Butterflies which is an NGO based in Delhi. It commissioned me to write uh, three graphic novels, one on the JJ Act, uh, the second on uh, diabetes and the third one on POXO which is very much in the news now. Now POXO is Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act. For me this was the biggest challenge because I had to take this rather tough act and break it down into simple language which children could understand and appreciate. So this particular book of mine has been doing quite well and I'm immensely satisfied that I could contribute a little bit in creating some kind of awareness on this topic which is so very vital and so very critical in today's society. I would like to share with you uh, a little bit about uh, two of my latest books. One is this book called A Tsunami called Nani which has received quite a few really good reviews. This is about a 62 year old Nani who is actually 62 going on 26. She, uh, the protagonist is a chap, is a youngster, 12 year old youngster called Anurag who when he hears that his uh, Nani is going to come and share this uh, space with him, his room with him, imagines a 92 or 90 year old woman who will get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and start screaming bhajans at him. Instead he finds this uh, Nani who is sassy who's savvy, who's got loads of chutzpa and oodles of guts. And together they try to, you know, bring some sunshine into the life of a old age home or old age club rather and some children who are orphans and also are differently abled. 
The second book uh, which I would like to share with you is Against All Odds. While the first book was published by Mango, this has been published by Duckbill. Now, this particular book is about a physically challenged uh, 11 year old whose uh, his name is Karthik, who's crazy about football. But because he's one arm too short, he's not allowed to play football. So how he goes about meeting this particular challenge, uh, kind of, you know, fighting against prejudice is what the book is all about. It's based on a real life incident. When I was a youngster in Hyderabad, I had one gone to see a football match where there was this one armed guy who was playing really well and his opponent started playing rough with him. They kicked him and they stamped on his one arm and yet he got up from all that hurt and uh, insult and went on to score two goals and won the game for his uh, team. That kind of stayed in my mind and then I wrote this book years and years later about uh, Karthik who and this is not only about prejudice against physically disabled there are other strains running uh, in the book where there is uh, some kind of prejudice against uh, a girl who wants to be a football goalkeeper about a youngster who wants to, you know, fight penury and continue playing football and another child who wants to learn dance and excel in it. So both these books are doing quite well. And uh, moving on to the next, I would like to say here that uh, as I uh, continue telling stories to my children and the best memories I have are of those storytelling sessions on long winter nights, those summer afternoons, those monsoon filled twilights and how we sat together and we laughed, we joked, we jumped, we yelled, we sang. Even today, if, if you ask my children, I think they would say that those were the best moments of their, of their life, you know, as they grew up. I went back to storytelling. Uh, this was actually a performance storytelling. In 2007, when I was uh, invited by Association of Writers and Illustrators for Children at a seminar in Delhi. After that, I've been telling stories uh, across the country. I've participated in many editions of Bukaru, as well as the Jaipur Literature Festival Outreach Program, and in schools in different parts. What I love about storytelling is that uh, I can just let go of my inhibitions. I can sing and dance and you know, perform with the children. Sometimes these children number as many as 400, which is considered a rather huge number, you know. For most storytellers would be more comfortable with 50 or 60. But for me, more is really great. And uh, the feedback or the response I've got from the kids is really, really fantastic. And I feel that you know that kind of energy and that kind of enthusiasm is what uh, keeps me going as a performance storyteller. So what kind of stories do I write? I've written in different genres. I've written fairy tales, I've <clears throat> written uh, folk tales, I've written fantasies, I've written uh, picture books and uh, uh, but what is closest to my heart is what I would call here and now writing. This is the writing which is about the present times Set in the present context, it is not about once upon a time far, far away. It is not about the glorious past, but it's about the present, tense or otherwise. It's about children who are around me, Ramu and Fatima and Shankar and Rehman and John and Jacob. The kind of problems they face. I've written about a child whose parents are divorced. I've written about a girl who gets caught in a communal riot. I've written about small incidents which take place, you know, cheating and copying and spying and bullying. And I feel that these are the stories which children of today can easily identify with. The, the, the protagonists of my stories are not children who are, you know, blessed many times over with magic wands or magic spells and who've got, who's, who've got wizards to help them out. My children are absolutely ordinary kids with extraordinary guts and gumption which actually helps them confront or meet challenges in their day-to-day -day life. So 
If I were to, you know, exemplify, according to me, the, the best, the absolutely the best director Indian films have ever seen is Rishikesh Mukherjee. And what makes him so special is because his stories, his films have a perfect combination, are a perfect combination of entertainment and values. For example, you take Anand, which I rate as the, is the best film made in, in Bollywood ever. It's got loads of entertainment and it's got great value. So I, it's my humble attempt to write stories which offer a huge amount of entertainment, which would keep the kid hooked on to the story and yet carry a certain takeaway, a certain feeling of hope, a certain feeling that, okay, everything is not lost. And that's how I write and that's how I want to continue writing. Finally, I would like to end with a poem dedicated to my inspiration, my hero, my father. My hero, when I was five, my father was the greatest. He was my hero, better than the best. My best friend was he, when I was ten. Someone to love and trust, and have lots of fun. The kite that wouldn't fly, the boat that refused to sail. Every test my hero passed, not once did he fail. Of love and togetherness, we shared many a moment. His future he neglected, but never even once my present. He regarded quality time, his most precious gift, even if it meant giving his career a bit of short shrift. When I was 20, he suddenly became a stranger. I was Mr. Know-all and the cool, lonely ranger. I thought he was a failure who had achieved nothing in life, neither wealth, nor status, nor position. He was merely a father to his son, a husband to his wife. When he should have been climbing the ladder, he wasted his time on the family. Instead of being busy in meetings, he was busy tending my hurting knee. I envied my friend his father's success and felt very small. How I wished my father too was a chairman so that I could strut proud and tall. One day my friend saw my album of the time when I was nearly 10. In it were all the memories, the love, the joy, the fun. As he scanned the snaps, his face grew long and sad. I wish we could trade places and I could have such a loving dad. I have everything, my friend said, that money and status can buy. Yet in my album, there is no photo of dad and I. While I was growing up, my dad too was busy growing. And in my stock of photos, there is not a single one worth showing. You have so many memories to share, while I have none. Though I may have a swanky car and a big house, I have lost a childhood of love and fun. As my friend left, I had tears in my eyes. How selfish and mean I had been, he made me realize. I went to my father, a tired and crumpled man. I told him, I'm sorry, but I love you more than anyone ever can. As he took me in his arms and both of us began to cry, he was once again my hero and I only five. My thanks to Shamila and Kahani Takbak for giving me this great opportunity to interact with you guys, to reach out to you guys. Thank you.